Welcome to another episode of Inspire for Travel. My name is Imani and today I'm in Notting Hill in West London, England. Now every year you have the largest street festival in Europe and that's the Notting Hill Carnival. A lot of people, thousands upon thousands of people flood the streets of West London to enjoy this street festival. So today we're going to really go and really get a vibe of what it's really like. Now, a lot of people who are coming here, I'm not sure if they are aware of the history of the carnival. And I want to find out, do people really know who started the Notting Hill Carnival? I've got a question, yeah? I'm, I'm from, In my name is Imani from Inspire for Travel. I want to know, do you know who, st who started the Notting Hill Carnival? Um, Claudia Jones, Claudia. she is from Trinidad and Tobago. All right, like all right, lovely. Claudia Jones. Thank you. Claudia Jones, now she was a journalist and a very uh, but powerful activists here in England and as far back as 1959 you had a kind of a Indo carnival in the St Pancreas Town Hall in North West London But you had other people who contributed as well to the development of the carnival. You had the likes of Silver Batiste, who was a chairman, I believe, of the first committee of the Notting Hill Carnival. And he was also a panist as well. And he used to teach um, people from, well, I would say, deprived children how to play the, play the steel band, steel pan, I should say, in Adventure Park in the Labra Grove, Notting Hill area. So that was very interesting. You also had the likes of Leslie Palmer, he was also a teacher. You had people like Ronnie Lazlett, who was a community worker in the Notting Hill area. And she, along with um, Sylvester Batiste, worked together to really push the carnival forward. You also had the likes of another gentleman called Russell Henderson. Now he was a musician and I believe he was the person who played the steel pan on the streets of Notting Hill and from there you had a lot of people that followed him and that was actually a real start to really pushing this whole street festival on the streets here in West London. So it's very interesting and we're going to check out and really vibe with people to see what they have to say about who started the carnival.
Another important thing to remember, in 1958 there was the Notting Hill race riots. Now it's important for people to know there was a lot of racial tension that's been happening between the Caribbean or West Indian community as well as people who are from here in England. And there were a lot of um, racial problems that was happening. You also had gangs like the Teddy Boys and stuff like that, who used to try to terrorize people from the Caribbean community. So there was a lot going on. So really, the carnival was to really show the real essence of the culture of the West Indian people. And it was a collective effort to bring it together by people from the various different islands from the West Indies.
from speaking to different people, some who didn't really want to be on camera, it's clear that the whole starting of who started the camp, the carnival, was a collective effort. And clearly, from the names that I've mentioned earlier, you see some of the people who played an important role in really starting this largest street festival here in England. And you can see many people are coming on the streets, many people are descending on the streets, coming out in their numbers to just have a good time here in Notting Hill. Um, the carnival a lot of them were um, 
panis, what is called panis, and that's people that play this instrument here. This is a, called a steel pan, and they have various notes that people will play on the stick. So it's very interesting to see some of this here. This is really what really kicked off the carnival, and even had people like um, Sylvester B Baptiste, who was also himself a panis, and the, and many of the other people who really started the carnival were very good in the steel pan. Thank you. Yeah. <laughs>